Hi, this is Mike Arison, Product Manager for Power and Inductive Applications at Ferrite Products. So this is going to be a video to answer a, a typically asked question or to aid in answering a, a common question we get, which is, I have a ferrite core and I don't know what it is. Can you help me identify it? So we're going to be looking at two EMI suppression beads here and we're going to try to figure out what exactly they are. They're equivalent size, but they're two different materials. And just before I started the camera, I dropped them on the floor, so I genuinely don't know which is which. So the first thing, most obvious thing, is going to be to measure the cores, get the dimensions, and go over on our website here to board components, EMI suppression beads, and then match up the dimensions with the core and part number on here. That'll get you the size. Now a lot of these cores, especially in the case of these two, they have the same dimensions but are constructed of different materials. And the way we'd normally go about testing that is plug them into an impedance analyzer we give nominal impedance values here and you'll be able to kind of determine based on the measured impedance at these frequencies what material it is. That's well and good if you have an impedance analyzer handy that goes into several hundred megahertz. That's not a super common piece of equipment to have around and due to the cost it's pro prohibitive to acquire one just for the purposes of characterizing a ferrite core. So we're going to be going over some more simplistic methods to narrow down as to what material these cores are made out of. In the spirit of being simplistic, and for reasons that may or may not be obvious depending on when you're watching this video, we're in my garage at my house as opposed to in one of the laboratories at ferrite. So we have a, a fairly limited amount of equipment to use to characterize these. So we have our two cores here, uh, some 26 gauge wire, six inch caliper, a standard, relatively standard multimeter. And this is a cheap LCR meter this is a Keysight U1733C. We'll get into this a little bit later. They're a couple hundred dollars. They're not overly expensive and cheaper versions do exist, as well as homebrewed methods like using an oscilloscope and a signal generator. For the sake of ease, we're using this. So ferrite materials can really be broken into two basic materials. We have nickel zinc ferrites and manganese zinc ferrites. Generally speaking, manganese zinc ferrites are higher permeability ferrites designed for lower operating frequencies, and nickel zinc ferrites are lower permeability ferrites designed for higher operating frequencies. So we'll go over to our materials page here. So we have a couple categories here, suppression materials, inductive materials, and power materials. So one material may be used for more than one application. For example, you could have inductive applications and suppressive applications for a given material, but the application type and the material type is going to dictate what geometries those materials are used in. So for example here with suppression beads, we know we're going to be looking at the suppression type material. So we'll limit our options to what is on the suppression materials page. So easiest and least involved answer to get is what is the basic type of material? Nickel zinc or manganese zinc? So for that we can actually just use our digital multimeter set to measure resistance. So a key factor, aside from the permeabilities of the materials differentiating manganese and nickel zinc materials, is the bulk resistivity. So if we look on our chart here, 
all these materials that have a really high bulk resistivity, we're going to be looking at nickel zinc ferrites. Any of the materials that have really low resistivities, those are going to be manganese zinc ferrites. And the manganese zincs are, have low enough resistivities where we actually should be able to measure them with a somewhat decent multimeter. So without making actual measurements, we can just probe across the surface on some of these materials. So we get about 15 kilo ohms, 10, 15 kilo ohms. And on this one, we get no reading at all. So we're way out of scale for this multimeter. So pretty safe assumption, this is going to be a nickel zinc ferrite. This one over here is going to be a manganese zinc ferrite due to the lower resistivity. So good, we, we have part of our answer there. So we know on the lower resistivity one, we're going to be looking at one of these manganese zinc materials, such as 31, 77, 78, 73, 75, or 76. That gets us more information and eliminates about half the possibilities, but it doesn't quite tell us specifically which one of those materials it is. So the, the next step, and the, the main factor that differentiates one material from another, is a parameter up here called initial permeability. So this is an uh, inductance-based measurement. So this is the, the permeability of the material measured at 10 kilohertz, less than 10 gauss. We call that initial permeability. That's the main distinguishing factor between materials. So in order to calculate initial permeability, we're going to need a couple things. Um, a way to measure inductance. So that's going to be our multimeter here. We need some method of measuring the cores. And we're going to need some wire. So step number one is going to be measure the dimensions of the cores. So we have a handy little spreadsheet up here that we're going to use to calculate the permeability of our cores. So the first step is going to be measure these cores three major dimensions. So that's going to be outer diameter, inner diameter, and the height of the core. And we're going to use those major dimensions to calculate the air core inductance. I won't go into the exact formula for calculating this. We, we have this on our website, we have this in our catalog, and the information is pretty available out there. So for the sake of not making this a 30 minute long video, I'm not going to go too in depth into that. So we're going to measure, we're going to call this sample one, sample two. So we're going to measure our outer diameter. So now that we have our dimensions, we're going to go ahead and wind these cores. All right, so we have both of our cores wound now. We wound these with 10 turns. Now, normally a EMI suppression bead like this, in operation, you're going to have one single pass through, pass a wire through the aperture of the core. For the purpose of this, we're using 10 turns on here, so 10 passes through the aperture of the core. The reason we're doing that is to eliminate some of the error of the inductance that's added by the wire. So each turn that you put through the core is going to roughly increase the inductance of the whole assembly uh, exponentially, whereas the actual length of the wire will increase the inductance, but only linearly as the length of the wire increases. So we're going to see more of the effect of the ferrite, less of the effect of the wire. So our next step is going to be to measure the inductance on this. So we'll turn on our multimeter, or our LCR meter. So we're going to set this over to series. And we're going to shift our frequency 
to 10 kilohertz. Now, if you don't have the option specifically of a 10 kilohertz LCR meter, one kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, the permeability, the inductive portion of the permeability is relatively flat at all those lower frequencies. So we shouldn't really see a whole lot of error if we can't measure exactly at 10 kilohertz. The readings won't be exact, but it, it might be a good enough approximation to figure out what material it is. So we're gonna, for our formula here, say that we have 10 turns. And now we're gonna measure our inductance. So take sample one, clip it into the spring clips here. Now realistically you'd want to do a compensation to zero out the meter beforehand. This is not you know, super accurate laboratory quality stuff. So we're not gonna worry about that too much just for the sake of getting an idea of what material this is. The spring clip fixture isn't really too big of a fan of smaller wire gauges. So it's fighting me a little bit. Okay, so we have a reading here of 173.57 microhenries. So we're gonna type that into our spreadsheet here. And we're gonna measure sample two, same way. So we get a reading on sample two of 47.6 microhenries. And remember we said this was probably a nickel zinc, so lower inductance is gonna mean lower permeability, so that makes sense. So going back to our spreadsheet here, we have mu i here which is initial permeability. So we have 2771 for sample one and 774 for sample two. So back on the materials page on Ferrite's website, we can now take our readings. So we're looking at 2770 for sample one. So our, our closest fit material, just based on initial permeability is going to be 73 material. So these are nominal permeabilities. Um, they're not going to be 100% exact every time. We're also not measuring with incredibly calibrated equipment in a temperature controlled environment. So we're expecting a little bit of error here. So 73 material is going to be our closest fit to our permeability number that we measured. And for sample two, we're probably gonna be looking at 43 material. We measured 770 and at 800 nominal permeability, 43 material makes the most sense. So looks like we have a 73 shield bead and a 43 shield bead. So this is using relatively simplistic equipment, um, easily available. A lot of times some of the stuff may already be on premises if you're trying to make a measurement. And a lot of times we, we will still get samples in to measure stuff and we could do a little more in-depth analysis in the lab and maybe that'll be a separate video of all the exact steps we would use to determine a material. But hopefully this gives you just a little bit of insight as to how you can evaluate your own ferrite cores and be able to take an educated guess at what you're dealing with. And with that, this is Mike Arison from Ferrari Products, and we'll see you next time.